Hello again, it's me. Um, I'm gonna start posting YouTube videos again, I've decided. And I'm hopefully gonna stick to it this time. It's been like a year and a half since I posted one. And um, the last couple of weeks I started a new car and I realized that I'm filming enough to make like 10, 15 minute long YouTube videos and cutting them down to five minute long videos to fit TikTok. Um, I don't really know why. And today I was sort of thinking about, a bit, thinking about it a bit more and I thought, why don't I just start making them again? I've still got my cameras and stuff. Um, it's the same amount of effort and I'd rather post longer videos than trying to cut down everything that I'm doing to fit into a four or five minute long video. So here I am, um, better late than never. I've already started on this car, but I'll catch you up to date with that and whatever else has been going on quickly. And then um, I'll see how far we get in this video, but I'm making pretty good headway so far. So most people that are gonna be watching this already know <laughs> what's happened with this car. Um, nothing, I've been driving it. I've gotten to a point where I think I've decided I actually wanna drive it a bit more. Um, it's not even close to being done, but every time I do something to it and get it to a drivable state and different or whatever, I drive it for like a month and then I decide, let's, let's just do more to it sort of thing. So starting to get real time consuming and expensive to do anything else to this car. Um, but if you don't know, and are just curious, because I haven't actually posted like 100% updates and everything I've done since last time I was posting YouTube videos or since, I don't know, whenever. Obviously, I've changed the front end. Um, I think it didn't even have the rear mount set up when I was still posting YouTube videos. So it's got twin turbos at the front now, um, slightly better turbos. I've done an ECU and stuff in it as well. So that's kind of cool. Uh, it makes 330 rear wheel kilowatts at 11 pounder boost. Um, I've redone the whole front of the interior basically it's got this massive head unit in it um i've started doing a bit of a stereo in it and stuff sort of thing with me because this is a um a little bit different to tiktoks and i have to be a bit more i can't think of the word um i have to put a bit more thought into it but i can talk slower i don't have to talk a million miles an hour even though i still will um and this camera i have no idea how to use it it was hard to use last time at the best of times but it's good and it works so i'll get there bear with me um, behind me, the black car. Again, most of you are probably gonna be here from TikTok, Instagram, whatever, but I have obviously put a kit on that. Um, it's looking kinda cool. Oh, I've got Lambo wheels on it now. Um, that's a bit of an update there. Two-piece Lamborghini Callisto wheels, dirty as at the moment. Um, one of the tires just keeps going flat, so I just decided to drive the white car for a couple weeks. Uh, it's got a full kit, it's been painted. Wow, actually, um, quite a lot's happened, hey. Now that I am speaking it out loud. So if you are new here, surprise, this is where you're starting off. But yeah, heaps has happened since I've been posting YouTube videos last. Um, what else? I've got, I've only gotten like one more car since then as well. I already, I still have the Seema and stuff, obviously. Um, but I've got this thing, it's Toyota Carina. And this is going to be up for sale very soon. So if someone wants to buy it, be my guest. Because it was cool initially. It's a four-door hard top. So pillarless, front-wheel drive, four-wheel steer, weird little Camry-looking thing. Um... So it was entertaining for probably the first 10 minutes and then I started building this other car, which I'm walking to now. Um, and I've decided that money would be more useful than that stupid little car at the moment. So by all means, DM me if you wanna buy it. Um, this is not like a, a sales promo, but I need to get rid of it. Anyway, onto the important slash cool thing slash why I decided I wanna start making YouTube videos again, because I'm doing something that I feel like is at least more interesting to watch than bodywork. Um, I'll actually comment on that while I'm talking about it. The reason I don't wanna do the white car as well is because everything is bodywork on that car now. Like I've started making a new front guard and I got halfway through, or most of the way through, and I hate sanding bog. Like I cannot stress enough how much I hate it. So I didn't do anything for a couple of weeks at all. And all I do is cars. So that kind of sucked for me. Um, but one Saturday, I think at like three o'clock in the Arvo, I was like, I'm gonna start on one of the other cars I have. I have the two other Majestas, the one I obviously cut the roof off of, and then the black one that I might've mentioned what I was gonna do with, but I don't think I ever got around to even looking at beyond pulling the front end off the car somewhat. Um, but I did start on that a couple of weeks ago and it's full steam ahead. I'm back into it. It's actually enjoyable to work on cars again. Um, and like I said, I feel like it's something that's gonna be somewhat interesting to watch. I probably won't do heaps of time lapses and that sort of thing because I'm not very good at editing and music and stuff like that, but I will give you updates. Um, and again, like I said, I'd rather be posting YouTube videos than TikTok videos that I have to condense massively. So, you ready? So it's in a bit of a state at the moment. Um, I can put a front end on it mostly. It's not fully mounted, but it's another 
Toyota Crown Majesta, about the same era. It's a 186, um, except this was the one I got off Jake and the f- it, it, he'd run at the back of someone sort of thing like a week after he got it, which sucked. But I remember saying to him on the day that I got it, I was going to make a burnout car out of it, put a big blower out the bonnet. Um, and even though it was a, probably two years ago now, I got around to it or at least started. So first thing I've done is obviously get the old motor and box out. Um, there is videos of all this stuff as well but they're all on TikTok sort of thing. And so, like I said, better late than never. Um, but this is where I'm at now. So it's a five liter Holden motor, um, 304 or whatever. It'll stay a 304, it won't stroke it, won't, you know, fucking oversize it. Again, this is all new to me too. So I'm learning along the way with this, um, but it's sitting in there. There's power glide behind it. Um, there's an 8V71 currently sitting on top of it, just for aesthetic purposes. Um, it's just a shell of a blower, but that is what's going to be going on it. Um, the blower plates have been ordered, they're on the way and stuff sort of thing. So then we'll do that, get it all cleaned up, get it sent off and get converted. Obviously I'm going to pull the motor back out, freshen the motor up. Um, a lot of learning. Um, like I said, like I said a million times, because I keep saying like I said, um, this is all pretty new to me. So it's different, it's more interesting. Um, dad knows heaps about this. this is what dad does he's got a blown five liter in his tirana and i think as soon as i heard that i was like i want a burnout car a power cruise car whatever i want something that sounds like that because it's the coolest thing i think i've ever heard um i think it sounds way angrier than blown ls but anyway i'm just gonna ramble for this whole video so enjoy this is just what i normally do but so far i've really been testing my fabrication skills um i've made front tubs because the front end was all mangled, so I had to cut it off, basically. So I've made um, like a new front end to RHS from here forward. It was pretty well crumpled back to almost a strut, but I got this out as straight as I could. Tubs, uh, did a little bead roll on them sort of thing. So again, it's all new to me, um, just doing whatever. I think it looks pretty cool. I've made a removable tube front rad support. Um, this all fits really nicely. It looks a little bit funky here. I had to weld it, unfortunately. Initially, it was too nicely even bent bits but I didn't have clearance for the headlights so um, I pillaged the front end off the white ute thing that's not going to be seen the road in quite a while but um, for the time being it's going to sit on here it is going to have like a widened front and all that sort of thing but this is pretty good for mocking up a front end and making sure everything mounts and fits like normal because that's more important than anything because that means I can chuck whatever bumper on it whatever headlights in it and not have to fiddle around for ages trying to get stuff to fit. Um, beyond that, the car's dead stock. There's nothing else super exciting happening. It's super straight. Um, all I've basically done is steal bits and pieces off this. Um, like the boot, I pulled the boot off it and made a mold from the boot at one point, but I do still have all the garnish and all that sort of thing. Um, other than the, the front end damage and the airbags going off, like seriously, I probably could have cleaned this car up and registered it again, but um, I didn't and here we are. It's Give me a spare motor and box um and now it's going to be something that's probably way more fun than it would have been if i had to clean it up and sold it so but beyond that i don't feel like there's too much more i can show you that isn't pretty evident already um i still haven't mounted the motor and box or anything yet oh sorry the motor rather because the box is mounted um i made these motor mounts so it's just going to be like an engine plate essentially um because it's not going to be seeing the road or anything like that but i think they're pretty cool um, it's going to be super uncomfortable to drive. <laughs> I've obviously got one for both sides, but I still need to reinforce the frame rails um, and make a bit of L or something for this to actually sort of sit on mount to properly. But I thought the most important thing would be, and the thing that's within my um, ability until I sort of get a bit of a hand from dad, because it's going to happen very soon once we pull this motor back out and pull it apart, um, would be just sort of fabricating the front end stuff and for my first time making something like this I think I've done pretty well so far um, everything's obviously hand bent but it's pretty even I've done a few measurements everything's as good as it can be for me and as good as it needs to be for what it is anyway um, I guess that's you're pretty pretty well up to date now on what's been happening sort of thing so for the rest of this video um, it's like Saturday Arvo and I didn't want to film first thing in the morning or start a video first thing in the morning because I know how I am first thing in the morning and I sound like I want to die. So at least start it on a slightly more positive note, but I will continue tomorrow um, with a bit more and tonight as well. But at the moment I'm um, finishing like the welding of these tubs and welding up a few of the holes on the strut towers and stuff and just sort of grinding them back because I want it to look pretty. <laughs> They're not structural. It's not the end of the world if um, they're not they're not gonna I don't know 
take an impact. That's why I'm going to have like a whole tube bash bar and stuff on it. But yeah, so I'll continue with this and I'll come back when I've got a little bit further. So I've run a bead all the way along here because um, where it met right at that sort of butt joint was real weak. Um, I already ground the other side down and it sort of blew through, so I had to fill it back up. But I learned from my mistake from about 20 minutes ago. So um, what I'll do now is I'll grind this down on the 45 to get it sort of nice edge on it rather than a real sharp edge. Um, and then hopefully it shouldn't be so paper thin that it sort of blows through straight away. So I ground it back and obviously I went too far um, and I made some holes in some spots. And I'm also thinking that the go will probably be welding this from the back side. Um, so I'm not grinding off as much from this side. Uh, yeah, I feel like that makes a lot more sense. Um, rookie error for me not doing that in the first place. I was just being lazy and I didn't really want to have to try and get up in here because this is part of the body. Obviously, I can't really remove it. Right, can I get in there? You can see heaps of holes. There you go. You can see how much light's coming through it sort of thing. But I think I don't really have a choice. So I'll turn the wheel out and I'll see if I can sort of get to weld in here a little bit and then grind it again. Rookie move on my end. Um, I can pull the guards off. So, ta-da. This will make life about a million times easier. And they hang up here pretty well. So that's out of the way. And now I can actually get in here. So I'll be doing that right now. Obviously it's a lot uglier, but it's sort of almost rounded over how I want already. And I know there's heaps behind it. So now I can get an even nicer bevel, I guess, or round over on it. Um, miss one little spot here, but I'll quickly get that and then I'll finish this off and it'll be sweet. So now what I'm going to attempt to do, which I'm not going to call body work because I don't think it's body work, is um, work out where the highs and lows are on this because it's pretty much fully welded in. I don't actually need to weld anything else to it so it's not going to warp very much more at all. So I think still guide coat. Um, I'll just get a bit of this on here and I'll give it sort of like a rough sort of board file just so I can see where the highs and lows are and I'm going to attempt to like panel beat it because I want this to be mostly metal um, obviously filler where it meets the strut towers and stuff like that but I don't want to put bog on these like a bead roller so I kind of need to get it pretty good um, it doesn't need to be perfect but it's good practice if nothing else so this is new to me I have a vague idea of how to do it but I'll see how I go so after heaps of hitting and carrying on, I think I pretty much worked out what the go is, what I'm doing. Um, I've tried doing this sort of thing like on more than one occasion, but usually I can't be bothered. Whereas this is like, I want it to be good. And I want it to be, like I said, not full of bog um, in the front end for a multitude of reasons. Um, and it's cool to learn something new. So it's not going to be perfect. Um, and the last 10% will definitely be high fill because I'm going to paint the engine bay and it'd be silly not to high fill everything. Um, it saves a lot of work, but just put some more sort of guide coat on it and I'll um, give it a quick rub sort of vertically, which is what I'm sort of going for. And um, you can already see it's sort of flaking off, but I think for what I'm going to do with this, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it in the video. Um, that's pretty good. So it's just right up near this seam and in this corner sort of thing that's still down a little bit. Um, I can probably work it a little bit more. I probably will. But I've got most of the radius feeling really nice. Um, and most of the nasties out of it sort of thing. So pretty happy with that. Um, I'll go for a bit more sort of thing. I'd like to this weekend get the tubs done and the radiator support, um, I need to do the uprights on that sort of thing. And the motor mounted ideally would be sick because that's what I was going to do the first weekend I started doing it and then everything else sort of became more interesting, but so far so good. So this is by no means perfect. Um, I'm not going to be able to get the reflection in it, I don't think, but like for metal and for my first go really at doing this, I'm not unhappy with that at all. Like I said, once this gets high feel and paint on it, you're not going to notice it. Like I've seen, I've seen cars with front tubs and some of them are awesome, obviously. Some of them spend fucking forever doing them. Um, a lot of them are also prefabbed and welded in, which mine aren't. So I made them. That's pretty cool. Um, so even if they're not perfect, I made them from scratch. Um, and I think they'll look pretty good. They'll definitely serve their purpose, which is just keeping the engine bay clean and looking kind of presentable sort of thing. So I've got both sides pretty much continually welded in now. Um, I won't get into doing any body filler or anything like that yet. 
I don't want to. Um, I'll do the rest of the important stuff sort of thing, making the actual structure before I get that carried away. So I might start maybe making the radiator support sort of thing, um, like the sides of it. I don't know what you'd call it, the thing, the, the uprights for the radiator support, because I guess this whole thing is um, technically a radiator support. But yeah, sit down for a sec, have some food probably, and then I'll continue with those. I've actually got a bit sitting around somewhere in this mess of stuff that I've been working in. Um, here, I think this is it. So basically what I'll do is I'll continue this down and I'll um, have sort of two vertical things and I'll gusset in between those as well. Um, like I will with this top bit, I actually have a panel up here too while I'm thinking about it that'll sort of sit nicely along the top here. I just need to trim it up a little bit more. I did buy this the other day to try and help me in my quest, um, but they advertised it as a dimple die. I don't really know what I was expecting. I know what dimple dies are worth, um, and they're a lot more than $100. So this is essentially like a hydraulic hole punch, but I'm sure I can make something that'll dimple the one size hole that I'll need to dimple, at least for now, because um, I don't want to be spending hundreds of bucks on dimple dies. So I've ended up with something in my eye, which is not ideal and pretty uncomfortable, but I know when I go to sleep, I will shed it, remove my eye, that'll happen, I'm sure. So I'm only gonna do a little bit more tonight, but straight away, um, I had to hit out the side a little bit because it was a bit uneven and it's sort of cracked, but I know it's well on the other side, so I'll come to that later. But what I wanna quickly do tonight is make the other three of these, cut them off and just get them tacked on for the uprights of the radiator support. So at least it feels like I've been relatively productive because I've just been grinding and welding heaps today. So do that quickly and then um, I'll be back. So I've got three lengths cut, like a bit long. Um, I can't find the radiator that was here that's gonna be the same dimensions, but basically what I'll do is get them up in this bender, um, the said bender in question. I think it's for copper tubing or something, but this is basically how I've been doing everything. So it's worked so far. So get him in there. And then I know I need to bend it. A bit hard with one hand, but I'll get there. And I think it was like 45 degrees or something. So I'll keep bending these up um, off camera because it's too hard to do with one hand. Ratchet is in the shed helping. Been a good guy. So I've got four of these bent up. So now I'll take them to the drop saw and cut them all off. Uh, like 90 degrees so I have like a bit of a slash cut on them and then I'll sort of cope them the tiniest bit with a grinder to make them fit under there so none of them are the right length um, but all the bends were pretty similar and I think I visually got them pretty close um, I haven't measured anything yet but what I wanted it to look like was essentially I think I've achieved it it um, sort of follows it down and it looks like that bends sort of turning down not so much, depending on the angle, but like I said, it's not all that important um, as long as I get them pretty even looking um, and obviously as even as I can actually sort of get them. And then obviously work out the overall height and trim the bottom and make a bottom plate for it and weld them all securely. They're massively gappy, um, which isn't the end of the world because it's not super important here. There will be stuff forwards of this as well that'll be stronger and more designed to take impacts. Um, not that there will be any, but that'll probably do for tonight. So it's another day. Um, today, so far, I haven't done much, but the hole punch kit that I bought, um, I was convinced that there was a way I could turn them into dimple dies or at least make it dimple something. Um, and there was, so I'll show you that in a sec, but I'm about to um, drill eight holes in this panel for the top of the rad support. Um, and then I'll go over to what I made or what dad machine up on the lathe rather um, out of the thing I bought for a hundred bucks on eBay to dimple it and dimple it really, really well, I think anyway. So, all right, so this is probably slightly more tedious than using a um, actual dimple die. I don't know how to use one. I've never used one. I was never gonna buy one um, unless I get super rich because they're like a hundred dollars each for anything bigger than like an inch. But got all my holes drew it out to uh, close to 11, 12 mil. Um, and then I got this thing. It was like, like, like I think I quickly showed it before, but it was like a hundred bucks. Um, and essentially what it is, is a hole punch, hole shear thing. So you can see sort of what it does. Um, but what I'll be doing is this, pull this out. I'll show you one quickly because it's super cool. Um, and, oh, actually, so that's that. And then 
this is what I came up with. So this is the receiver, I guess, for the 34 mil one. Um, this is the next size up, and it was just lucky that this sort of fit into it because it was about the right size. So we tried a couple initially, um, couldn't get it to sort of work perfectly, and then came up with this. So essentially, this goes on here like this, and then what that does, crushes it. Um, and here's the tests. So this was the first one before we machined anything up. This was the first one before we machined that down to be a bit less shallow. And then this was the last two with it fully done. Correct, compresses it, flattens it back out. I think that's sick. Like that's for something that's essentially free because we machined it up and this thing is a hundred bucks and I can sort of just do it all with this thing. So put this in here um, and it's actually, I mean, for something that's super cheap, it's pretty easy to use as well. So him and then basically slowly but surely get these through. So I could just drill the holes out to whatever size this is, 22 mil, I think, but um, I'm not gonna do that. So him on there, tighten this up, crank this down, punches the hole out, keep going so it goes through, pops out and crack him off. You get the idea, but there you go, bigger hole. So I'll do all these. All right, so I got all those punched out. Um, like I said, it's a bit slow, but it's pretty sick because to make this and do this, really all you need is this thing, a drill bit, and probably an angle grinder to actually make the bigger die. But now that's out, basically take the little die out and then punch the bigger hole, the correct size hole, which is this one, with this thing in here. Uh, get him in there, and then I think it's somewhere around here, here. So, oh, is it? No. Which one's behind me? Um, so, him. Get the bigger one on there. Get this guy on there. This is a really hard one ended. And then punch all the bigger holes out. So like a rookie, um, the hole that I punched the first time doesn't actually locate perfectly on the um, bigger sort of pin. So I realized on the second one, because I realized it was off and I was like, I drilled those holes wrong. And then I realized, no, it just doesn't locate. So that one is off, the rest of them are all pretty good. I sort of located it properly. But now basically this one, um, these two, and then I get this guy on here. And I'll do this off camera, but I'll show you after that one. Even better, I'll get Amelia to film it. So, uh, this one, and then this has a little chamfer thing on it to locate it sort of thing. So, it does the same nice ones, and then just whatever on the back, I could just get a big bolt, ideally, but make sure it's nice and clamped and located so I don't have a repeat of before. And then, Crush it down, and it should flatten itself back out. I'll probably have to beat it, up, beat it a little bit afterwards, but hopefully, there you go. So, because it's a bit thin on the walls, it's um, you can see it's kind of like warped or whatever sort of thing, but um, yeah, do the rest of these, and then I'll sit on there and show you. Alrighty, so I'll make sure this actually fits. I'm pretty sure it will. Um, I did sort of kind of check it before, but yeah, it's a little bit bowed, but how, I don't know, if I can follow it down the middle. Um, how cool is that? <laughs> I wanted to dimple dye something for so long. Um, so that to me is the coolest thing ever. And that looks like it will be heaps faster now that it's got that. Um, so my review of the eBay dimple die thing is um, if you buy it thinking it'll do anything with dimple dies it's horrible but if you buy it and make it work it's pretty good for a hundred bucks <laughs> it's kind of handy it's like a self-contained unit so this is it i'm gonna um, tack this in now and then i'll be back so i've got this all tacked in now um so what i'll do is i'll do the same as i've done here and um i'll continually continually weld it and then I'll sort of grind it back off so it looks like one panel rather. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do on the ends yet but I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. 
So that's all fully welded on. Um, the inevitable obviously happened and it bowed in the middle. Um, not too much, it's a pretty nice curve, but it's not the end of the world. Um, I can, you know, once I mount the sides and stuff, I can sort of jack up in the middle or something and maybe bring a bit of it back out, but I don't really hate the way it looks anyway. So I've ground this back twice now. I filled it back up with once, weld once. Um, second time is a lot better. There's still a couple of little cracks. I feel like I'm just going to have to keep doing this till it's good, but I think that looks pretty sick. Um, let's see if I can get it to focus. That's what I wanted, so it looks just like one one piece rather than something welded on there. I don't really like when these are just tacked on or stitched on. I think this looks pretty cool, but um, probably need to go get some more flap discs and... Yeah, then I'll continue. So I've just done more welding and you can see now it's beyond a gentle bow. It's really bowed. So he's hoping this is the last welding I have to do. I did all the way along the backside again um, and a couple more spots in the front side. I think I'm chasing my own tail here by not welding the underside or not trying to do something else. I don't really know though. Um, it seems to be getting closer, but it's really hard. I probably shouldn't be using an angle grinder either because that's probably not helping my case. But I know if it's mostly good, a high fill will be my saving grace. Um, but I'll grind this off and then hopefully, if it doesn't take too long and I am fine this time, I won't weld this again and then I'll make some fronts for the frame rails and make some little bits for this to mount off and then I can unbow it. <laughs> so after, I think, 20 minutes maybe of grinding and shortening this angle grinder's life by probably an immeasurable amount. Um, I don't think there's any cracks. I'm not going to go any further. Um, there's a couple of little pinholes and there's some spots that I could probably blow away more, but I'm not welding this again. So <laughs> I'm going to get some edge primer on this so it doesn't rust. And then when it comes time to sort of high fill everything, I'll give this a lot of coats of high fill because this will never, I'll never be able to get this dead straight. I don't know what the, um, secret is to when people metal work stuff like this probably a tig but um yeah beats me so so just before i get primer on it um that's pretty good there might be one little hairline crack but i'm sure a few layers of high fill is gonna fix that right up um i gave it a bit of an orbital to try smooth it out a bit more so i think it looks pretty good um this is usually a pretty good test so we'll see how it looks once it gets a bit of fucking paint on it but I think that's pretty good. I'm happy with that anyway. So my last order of business for the weekend is making the um, front of the rails. So I'll tape this up and then I'll pull that off and trim around that and I wanna slightly undersize it and then I'm gonna make four of those and then cut two bits of tube to this length and drill a couple of holes and some stuff like that and hopefully I can get them done, welded on and maybe get the sides of the rad support attached to that so this has some backbone because it's super flimsy at the moment it's only those two bolts up in the corners but i should be able to get all that done and then go to bed so i'm doing it real rough i've got no um what was i gonna say no center punch i couldn't really find heaps of steel and then i found some after i made these bits but i'm sure this is gonna be fine i've done everything else overkill um and what was the other thing I forgot to say? Nothing. Anyway, so M8, because I'm going to have two in these ones, diagonals. Um, basically, I'm going to have studs as the males on this one, on the car sides, so opposite to the upper ones. So hopefully, that's going to be fine, I guess. Um, but it'll be easier because the bulk of the weight will be here. So what I'll do is I made four of these. I think it's, I'd like to say it's two mil, but it's probably 1.6. Um, but it's going to have tube pretty much the whole the whole area of it so yeah fuck what can you do um anyway what i'll do there is actually no i won't i'll do nuts maybe i'll work that out in a second anyway um split this into two so pairs and then weld the back of one on they it'll locate it sort of thing so i'll do that so i am exhausted and i am at the point where i can't really be bothered doing any more so fresh eyes are probably going to be better so um this is where i got to I got these made. Um, focus. I got these made, and I have to pull the rad support off and a bunch of other stuff, and grind it back and 
well the tube on and i forgot to um make locators i just didn't think that one through i should have just done studs so then i didn't have to do extra holes but i'll have to do some holes behind where the tube goes so for tonight and for this video that is gonna be it so yeah hopefully i'll do more of these <laughs> i mean i probably will but um yeah if you enjoyed watching leave a like let me know see ya